Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain and Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And uh, today um, we are going to be working on um, our white poppy vase. You're going to need um, a few things in order to be able to work on this poppy vase. The first thing is you need a vase. Now this is my vase and you want to put the poppies all the way around. This is to go all the way around. Now, um, originally K Meyer did this uh, demonstration for our Dearborn group and she did it on a huge vase and she had many poppies. She had one up here, one down here, a couple around the back things, but you don't need the buds at this time. You don't need leaves at this time. Okay, so when you get started, you're going to need um, a couple of things. You're going to need resist. Resist is, this is how it comes, red resist. It's only five bucks. It's not bad. It's almost like a jello. <laughs> That's the way I would describe it. It's not real thin, but it's not real thick. And it dries, it dries so that you can just lift it off. So it's, it's nice. You're also going to need something to lift it off with. Now I have this needle thing that I use, but if you have like a needle or uh, tweezers, that'll work in order to lift it off. You may want to have a Sharpie, either a red or black, um, to kind of reinforce um, what you've traced so that it's there once you lift the resist off. And then you're also going to need some uh, paint colors. Now, you don't need all of these. Some of these, um, I think Kay just had there because she liked them. Um, but this one is Old Ivory. This is Celadon. Celadon is a funny green. It's a pretty green. If you've never used it, you know, and you come across it, buy it because it's a pretty green, but you don't need to use it. Um, this is the a blue, deep blue green. Now, yellow green we will use this time, and we will use the moss green this time. Um, we will also use dark, we won't use dark green this time. That's for the leaves. There's gray. We will use a gray. I'm using Copenhagen gray. That's just my favorite gray. Um, tan, you do not need. Look how close it is to ivory. See? Yeah, you can use ivory instead. And this is black, and you will need that for the center of the poppies, of course. Um, I would recommend, if possible, uh, that you have a medium that you know is going to really pick up the color. I like my half copaiba, half um, mineral oil, and it works really well for this. Now, brushes. Um, you're going to need a couple really skinny ones to put the centers on those poppies. I want to use a square shader, so I like my number 10. It's the smoothest one I have. This is what you'll use to put the gray on to make the poppy kind of pop. And then this is for the background. I'm using an 18. I may have to change it. I haven't tried this brush yet, um, but I, I may have to change it, so we'll see. Okay, let me tell you the first steps. You're gonna take and you're going to cut out your, cut out your line drawing. And you're going to somehow just glue, you know, see, I just put a little tape on the front to hold it to some tracing paper. And then you're going to put it on and trace it. Trace it with a fine pen, really push hard, okay? And once that's done, you're only gonna do the flowers, you are not doing the stems, you are not doing the leaves, this is, a, or buds, this is a great beginner project because there's not that much that you need to do on the first round. Although, I did find that I ran into a problem because I kept getting my hands and everything, so you may have to fire like I did in between. Um, and then when you take it off, you're gonna have your tracing, and then I reinforced my tracing Originally, I reinforced it with this black Stabilo. Don't do that. The Stabilo um, kind of mixed in with the paint, the lighter color paint, and it stayed on there and I was really upset. So what you want to do is either uh, use a Sharpie or a red Sharpie or a black Sharpie. And we'll find out today because uh, that's what I did. I used a, a red on one and black on the other to see if that is the best way to go. Okay, now you're going to paint your resist on, and then you're going to do the whole background, and then you're going to take this resist off. 
Okay, that kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing. You will also need a sponge. If you don't have a sponge, this is something you'll need because the background is completely sponged and it really, it really ends up looking nice. So, alrighty. I am going to tilt you down and give you an idea of, uh, of, of what we're doing. Okay, so this is the vase that I did, okay? And this, this is a vase, the vase that we're working on. I don't have the stand that I normally have today because we don't need it with this round, um, round vase, okay? So let's talk about applying resist. I have, I have an old resist and I have new resist. This resist I haven't opened, and so it's absolutely fine. And I'm not having any problems with it, and um, it, it's working like a charm. So um, what I'm going to do is, I'm not gonna open this one, because I don't wanna use that one until I'm ready for it. I, I'm going to open the one I've already used. Now, this is one that dried up on me, okay? I've had it probably 100 years. And I didn't know until recently that you could reconstitute it. So what I did to reconstitute it, because I know there's a lot of controversy about how long do you do it and where do you put it and everything is, um, I took my, my dropper, it's a huge dropper. I put four to five drops in actually, uh, three to four, just depends how long, the first time. And you see, it, it does move. I don't know if you can see that it's moving. Here, I'll stir it. It should stir and have, you know, not much resistance. If it has a lot of resistance, then obviously it needs to go back in. And I put the water in. I um, put the microwave on five seconds, let it go, stirred it, felt that, and you can tell. And if you feel like, oh, no, you know what? It's going to need a little more. Then I put it back in the microwave with more water and I just stirred it when it came out. So now it's ready to be used. And I'm gonna use it on this one. Okay, now I have a brush that I'm using just to do this. It's, um, it's a cheap brush from the store, and it has a point on one side. It's a wedge. See, it's on an angle. It's a wedge. And I like that because you can see on here, there are spots where I needed to go out and get a lot of the the edges of this and make it frilly because white uh, poppies are frilly. And when I looked on the internet to get some other samples of poppies, you want the edges to be roughly. That's what makes this piece, okay? So look for roughly poppies. All right, so we're gonna paint this. And all you do is you just dip it in your resist, kind of wipe it off on the end, and then you paint. Now, I use the... I use the end that has the um, point to help me get to the ends here. You want it fairly thick, ladies and gentlemen. You do not want it too thin, but you do not want it too thick, but you do want it fairly thick. And I find if you reconstitute your resist, you need to use it immediately because it starts to get frothy again right away and just smooth it out. I have to turn this around, hang on. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this side here, and the same thing applies. You're going to, uh, uh, here we're having a, okay, you go here, go to the corner, bring it around, and then here and just do it, okay? Now, if you get any out, this is water-based, so it's very simple. All you have to do is rinse it off with water and soap and water and it'll come right off, so you don't have to worry about that. Hang on, I'm gonna cover my resist real quick. Okay, and um, it has to dry before you can do the background. Now, I got a little bit here, and so I'm just gonna try to wipe it off right now, get it off. If it dries and you notice that there's some out of the lines, you can take your pointer or whatever you're using to scratch it off with and make a line across where you want it to come off from, and then just 
pulled a little bit away from it. If you have to be very careful because you could easily lift this whole thing. So just pull a little bit away from it and just keep going until it comes off. Okay, like that. Okay, now this side is dry and this side is dry. So now I can show you how to start your vase. So we're gonna paint only on this side and then by then I think this should be dry. It takes sometimes 10 to 20 minutes to dry. We're gonna start at the bottom and um, we're going to use our ivory with a very small amount of celadon in it. So don't worry about if you don't have the celadon. We're gonna start at the bottom and you're just gonna, now you really want these colors to go on heavy. You will not be reapplying them at a later date. So wiggle, get your brush with a lot of oil in it and wiggle in that paint. You wanna make sure it goes on he heavily, heavily and thickly, you know, brightly, not thick, but brightly. Okay. And here we go. We're just gonna do it like this. And you're just going all around the bottom of it, about a third of the way up. Now, I don't have any celadon in. Here's the celadon. See the celadon? I think the idea was to introduce that so that you had a little bit of um, um, uh, like a, a green in it so that as it went up the to the next level and you go right over you paint right over your resist that's the whole purpose of putting the resist on there so you can paint right over it okay really get this on well you want it the color to really show see how much darker that was i'm going to go back and make this darker too it's really important that it be dark. You are not getting another chance at this in the future to make it dark. So make sure you've got it good and dark now. Now this, uh, it's still sticky. We can't go that direction yet. Okay. All righty. Okay, so I've gone about a third of the way up. You can add a little solid on if you want. I. I'm not crazy about it myself, so it's entirely up to you. Okay. And then you're gonna take your deep blue green. Now, if you hold the vase like I'm holding it right now, I'm getting my fingers around the top and that's probably not a good thing. You're gonna have to leave room for your fingers and you may have to finish it up a little later. Okay, so. Now we're going to go switch over to clean your brush really well. This brush, by the way, works really well. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked because I haven't had a brush that's worked this well in a while for the background. You see how smoothly it goes on? It's really a nice brush. I forgot about it. Okay. Now we're using our deep blue green. And... Um, it's suggested that you start at the top and work to the bottom so that you don't introduce too much of it to the bottom. So you start at the top and I know it looks hideous and I thought, oh, that's not the color I, I have on my base, but it was. And I was shocked because I didn't think it was, but it is. Oh, I'll just hold it by the top then. Um, there we go. Okay. And you're just pulling it down, keeping it right over the right over the resist. And right into the right into the ivory at the bottom. Here, I'll do it this way and I'll just hold it this way. Okay. Can you see what I'm doing there? See how I've done it? And you're just gonna take it all the way down to the bottom. This is so simple, anybody could do it. Okay, I wanna get this side a little further down there, okay. I do up around the top here. 
and I'm pulling it down. And then I will pull it down to the bottom this way so you can see. Now it doesn't have to be super smooth because you're going to use your, um, but you want to get a little of it down there, there. You're going to be using your sponge. So the main thing is you want it to be dark. Let's see how that, no, it's still real sticky on the back. So let's stop here. And you're going to take your sponge, like I've shown you, you take your sponge, you put your finger in the middle and you pull it around. This is the way Randy showed us to do it. And you form a ball and you start and you pat. First you pat a little heavy. I think that's just to sort of settle things. Here, let me hold it up a little. And you're starting at the top and you're going to move down into the ivory. And then you tap it. Pat, let me get over here. Pat, 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 and then you pat up and down. Pat, pat, pat. These are heavy ones, and then you pat lightly. Kind of anchors the paint to where it should be. Okay. And you're going to get that paint a little bit into the bottom, and you're just going to spread it lightly into the bottom. Okay, then you're going to use the other side of your sponge. You're going to do the same thing. Make a thing like this, take it off, and you're going to do the bottom. Pat, pat, pat. Now, I've gotten my fingers in here. I'm going to have to redo this guy, but you get the idea. And then just pat. Stay in the light and then go up to the dark at the very end because once you hit that blue, that deep blue green, it's going to be in everything. Okay? And that's what we have. So let me show you here. This is what we have so far. And you can fix up around the top or you can clean it off if you want. And... Uh, you know, whatever you, whatever you feel works the best for your particular vase. So whatever you want to do. Alrighty. So now you've done that. And the next thing we're going to do is remove the resist. I'm going to take my pin. This is this sharp thing that I have. Now, I prefer, as long as I can do it, to do it in the center like this. See where I went right in the center there? and lift it and then work around from the center out boom <laughs> and it all lifts right off it come off if you did it right in one piece and that's that's what it is i don't use this again by the way people so i know somebody's going to ask me but it has paint and everything on it now so i would no i wouldn't use it again Okay. Alrighty. So we've got that much done. So now the next thing to do is to shade the poppies with both gray and celadon. Now, I ran into a problem with this because I found that I kept getting in my own way and touching the background and all kinds of things. So for me, I fired it after I did this. And I know you think, okay, you're going to lose this, but you can put the thing back over it and retrace it. So let me show you what mine looked like. This is the one I was working on. And I fired it. And then I went back in and just lightly traced the poppy over it. And that way I can touch the background and I don't mess it up. 
And isn't that amazing? Now this one I put on the color a little bit lighter than I did here. But it, it still fires totally different than I thought it would. Um, let's start with this. Now if you can do it on this, you can save yourself a lot of time. So I'm going to go and use my number 10. I'm just going to use my, I have Copenhagen Gray, but it's Dove Gray, Copenhagen Gray, Slate Gray. You can use any of the grays. Any of the grays will work for you. Okay, so don't, don't panic. Any of them will work for you. Okay, now all you're going to do is pretend this is a rose, even though it's a poppy. You're going to go where, you're going to figure out this leaf is under this one, or this petal is under this one. And so you're going to start where you know that you have to apply color, and you're going to, here we go, you're going to kind of pull from the outside in. You use the side, here, let me show you. This is the way I do it. So here's, here's my petal, and here's the other petal over it, okay? And I'm going to take my gray, and I'm going to, it's like, almost like little C strokes, but you don't finish them. You see that? And then you can just kind of, or you can go this way if you want, but that's what you want, okay? And I know this is awfully small, so. Um, All righty. So I'm going to come in with a little more. I'm going to put a little here. Because that one's under. I start with the back ones. Because I know that they're under. And then I'll just pull it out a little. There we go. And then I'm going to go this one here. This one is under. Got a little on, on the top of this here. You don't want to get it on the top. It's a white poppy. So make sure you get the ah, nuts. Make sure you get the, uh, the color off the white part. Because you want the edges of these to be white. Okay. Now if you want to use a little solid on, you can. This is what it would look like. And actually, I think the celadon does pump it up a little bit for you. And put a little right here. That one went on easy. And then here, you've got the, the little piece that goes over. Do you see that there? And it's coming down. So that's going to be a place where you need to have a little bit of shading. And you're going to need to have, uh, oh, this one's on top. So you're going to need to have a little shading right here, too. But this is on top of that. And then you're going to do some right here. Oh, hang on. Get a little solid on in there. There we go. Like that. And this part is a ruffle here, so you're going to go like that. Uh, the rest is all white, except for right here. This is a ruffle coming down right there. Okay. Oh, and this is, this part is behind that part. Oh, a little too much. Now you think, oh, that doesn't look like much at all, but it will be fine. It will be absolutely fine. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just taking my rounded number four brush. And I'm going to take my yellow green and do the center of this. Uh, I have to look. I've got it. I've got it on kind of an angle, so I have to look. I'm going to do the center right there. And then we're going to take black. And we're going to put little dots. Oops. Here, let me. First, you have to put the little things that come out. 
like I said, this is not easy to do, especially since you've got this behind it and you can't touch it. Okay, and then we're going to take our smallest brush. And we're just going to put little dots on there. Just little dots all the way around. Okay, and this guy's facing this way. And that's all you do on this fire. And if you mess up like I did on here, then you're going to have to go back in and just tap, 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 and clean it all up. And you'll do the next one. Now, let me show you what it looks like. Fortunately, I did one last night, so we have one to work from. So this has been fired, but I didn't do the center because I thought it would be easier. This is a nice flat one, and I might use this for our demonstrations from now on because it's flat and it's easier for me to, um, to move it. And this one, again, we have to put the yellow in the center. So this is where it would be. I mean, the green in the center. So this is where it would be. And then we're going to put the black. Oops, I need some oil on that brush. That's the reason we're having trouble. Much easier. This way it's already fired. You don't have to worry. If you accidentally get any kind of... Um, your hand up there or anything like that, you don't have to worry about it. So that's why I'm saying I would recommend you take some time, fire it after you put the background on, then go back, trace out your, oh, I've got stuff here. Go back and trace your your rose, your rose um, poppy back on and then finish your poppy. It adds an extra fire. I need more oil, but I think it's worth it. And then we'll take and we'll just make these a little a little finer. Can you see what I'm doing there? Mm -hmm. So that's all you do on the first fire. That's it. We're gonna, you'll make this center a little darker on the next. You can add a little more of the gray. And then the next fire, we will also add all of the green to all of this, okay? So that's it. That's all we've done this time. And then next, tomorrow, next time we will put the green on and, and your vase will be done. It, it's a really simple thing to do. You can do it on a vase. You can do it on a box. You could do it on a plate. You could do it on um, a soap dispenser. You know, you could do this on a lot of things. It doesn't have to just be a vase. A soap dispenser actually would be kind of cool. Uh, pick up those brushes, keep painting, and, uh, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.